Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. We're he here to help you as technology professionals get more out of Office 365 and Azure. My name is Karawana Gatimu, and I'm happy to have a friend of mine from Microsoft Teams here with me today to talk with us a little bit about eDiscovery. I know that you have been asking a lot of questions about that out in the technical communities, and we thought it would be good if we brought in an expert and showed you a little bit about it today. Welcome. Hi. Uh, Hi. Thanks, Carolina. Thanks for having me. No problem. And uh, hi, everyone. I'm Anshuman, and I'm from the Microsoft Teams PM team. And I specifically work on the security and compliance feature for Teams. And I'm uh, happy to showcase the discovery and compliance content search for the curiosity of all our IT pros. Oh, that's excellent. Um, there is so much interest in this, and you know we have new features that are available now. But but first off, tell us how long have you worked on the Teams team? Oh, I've only worked on the Teams team since December. Ah, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> We're both newbies. We joined yeah. uh, in this last little period of time. What do you like about working on that team? I think the team is really fast and agile, and uh, there's a lot of transparency, and you can get decisions done very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, much like the way we use our we, we advertise our tool to be used. Yeah. So things get decided on the tool in Teams itself within a group chat or a channel conversation, and it's uh, really agile and fast. And I think there's lots of opportunities because it's a growing team. So somebody like me is happy to talk to customers and be stand in front of my features and get feedback. So it's super exciting. It's really exciting. Yeah. And you mentioned something really important, which is user feedback. We have feedback and comments down below uh, here on Channel 9, uh, or if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can please make comments. Also, you can reach out to us on our technical communities. Uh, that's aka.ms, uh, Teams Technical Community. We're really interested in getting your feedback on all of the different tools. And that's true across all of Office 365 and Azure. So we love to hear from you. People here inside of Microsoft actually do read and listen to that. That feedback, so it's yeah. not going into the abyss, and uh, you can testify uh, to that that we do. Absolutely. So please uh, be vocal and get engaged in the conversation. So, what are we going to talk about today? Um, so today, uh, Caravana, we're going to talk about two main features uh, in the security and compliance area for Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. The first one being compliance content search. So our main persona for these two features are legal or IT admins who use the security and compliance center, which I have up here on my screen, and. Um, these are people who are generally, you know, called into action anytime there is a legal or a court uh, order to gather documentation or electronic evidence. Mm -hmm. And electronic evidence can include um, all of the all of the work that's done across different workloads. So Microsoft Teams is the newest workload to join the Office 365 uh, cloud community. So any chat or channel message or file or OneNote or um, notes that you take on Teams are considered electronic evidence. Mm -hmm. So if there is um, a, um, a case where the court summons you know, to gather information, um, we need to be able to provide this evidence to the court. So the uh, legal admins and the persona or the compliance officer works often with a technical team who uses the security and compliance center to create a content search query mm -hmm. or to create an e-discovery case where they're able to go in and hunt for specific information within of teams. I see. I think that's one of the things that I know people have asked us quite a bit about yeah. is, is the security and compliance around Microsoft Teams, but about Office 365 in general as well. And the truth is we're very committed as a company yeah. to security and compliance, um, of course for our customers, but also for us as Microsoft. Uh, we have many of those same scenarios and we use our own features and tools yeah. in making sure that our own data is secure and compliant. So, there's lots of information about this uh, with the launch of the new Security and Compliance Center uh, that you can find out there online. And at the end, you'll be able to uh, click on some of the links that we'll provide to give you some follow-up information on that broader Security and Compliance Center offering. But um, let's now focus on e-discovery. Will you show us how it works? Sure, okay. happy to. That's great. Um, so here, we are in the Security and Compliance Center, as you see, and I'm logged in as an admin persona here. And uh, on the left rail here, you see the search and investigation uh, bar. Underneath that, we have three, three main features that we all enable for Teams. And today, we're going to speak about content search and e-discovery. First, we'll focus on e-discovery. So um, here, as you see, we've created an e-discovery case. Uh, the case is called Redstone Leaks State of Washington versus Tucker Burns, who happens to be a member on this team and also a real PM on our <laughs> team. Um, I'm going to switch over to Teams here for a second. 
And you see, this is the, I'm logged into Teams using the test tenant. And if you see, there's a project here called Redstone, which is a tented project. And there's conversations that are going on here about you know specific things, about NDAs. So clearly, this is a hush hush and secret project. And um, this is also the subject of this case, where there's being evidence being gathered about you know what's going on in this case. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how Teams is integrated into this experience. So this is the e-discovery experience where I'm inside the case now. So the first step is just the description and all the other things. It's a summary of what's going on. So the second step in the case is hold. So here, as you see, we've placed a legal hold on the on one of the mailboxes inside of the inside the team. So in this case, I've placed a hold on the mailbox of Tucker Burns because the case is between him and the state of Washington. So clearly, he's been up to something. And by putting his mailbox on legal hold, we make sure that all information and interaction that he has within Teams is preserved immutably so that somebody can come here and query for it and export that evidence and provide it in the court of law. I see. You can also add the group mailbox or the team mailbox and put it on hold, which means the same thing will start happening for all the channel conversations that are within of the team. Oh, that's excellent. Um, also, I've created a compliance content search here, um, which is called the Redstone search. This is specifically to glean information from within the team about which content is relevant to this case. Um, so the results of that are something like this. So you can see here that I'm seeing these items, which are different IM items from teams that show you the different uh, pieces of content where the keyword Redstone was mentioned. Um, We'll now move on to the last two parts of this um, this uh, e-discovery experience. So there's exports, and as you can see, you can export the results just like you could for your Outlook uh, or email searches, and they can be exported as one PST file or multiple PST files. And the members of the case, which is in this case just m myself, the persona that I'm logged in as Dan Stevenson. So in summary, you can use the e-discovery experience that you're already familiar with to search for email and other workloads mm -hmm. and search for Teams content directly within it. So you're already familiar with this experience. You're able to look up and create e-discovery cases for Teams specifically. So we are integrated into the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center, and we're fully compliant. That's wonderful. And I know that puts a lot of people's minds at ease. Now, to get to this experience, you do have to be an Office 365 admin. Is yes. that correct? You have to be a, a, an admin. And there are specific roles as well, like compliance administrator, organization viewer, ah. and uh, which you have to assign yourself in the permissions tab over here I see. That, that you can then um, uh, assign, view, and manage your discovery cases. That's wonderful. Well, I really appreciate you showing us how that works. I know that many folks have been asking about this, and uh, you'll also be able to get more information about all of these features as a whole in a blog post Asman will be posting on our technical community. Yep. So we'll put the link to that also uh, in the comments area. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. This is another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. I'm Kara Wanagatimu. I hope you enjoyed our uh, uh, show and tell of these great new features and uh, stay engaged. Join the conversation. We'll see you soon.